which the following does not appear in the figure. So an acute triangle, that's where you have 0 to 90 degree angles, so three angles, so that's 60. So 60, 60, 60, that's an equilateral triangle um, because they're all equal. So we have an acute and an equilateral. Isosceles triangle, two sides are equal, so these two sides would be equal. A right triangle, we obviously have a right triangle, so a scaling triangle is what we don't have. So choice E. And a scaling is where you have a triangle with three uh, unequal sides. So you could have that, that, that. That would be a scaling triangle. What is the slope of the line that is parallel to this? So we're going to put this in y equals mx plus b form. And so let's start by saying we have x plus 5, y equals 9. So let's subtract our x to the other side and we get 5y equals negative x plus 9. Divide both sides by 5. y equals negative 1 fifth x, because there's really a 1 before that, um, plus 9 over 5. I didn't really need to worry about that because that's the y-intercept. This is the slope. So we want a parallel line, which a parallel line means it's going to have the same slope. They're running together. So your answer is g. While we're on this, if this had been an opposite slope, it would be the opposite and reciprocal. So they would have a perpendicular line. It would be opposite. So that would have been 5 over 1. So opposite reciprocal would have been perpendicular. And ACT usually asks about opposite, I mean about parallel or perpendicular. So either way. Given that y equals this expression and x is greater than 1, which the following is a possible value of y. So if x is greater than 1, let's just make x equal 2 and see what happens. 2 over 2 minus 1 equals 2. Okay, so it doesn't look like it's going to be negative. Let's try 1.1. x equals 1.1. So 1.1 over 1.1 minus 1. And that equals 11. So let's just put another one in, x equals 5. So we have 5 over 5 minus 1, and that's going to be 1.25. So it looks like the bigger number you get, the closer this is, uh, the smaller this number is getting. So we already know this is 1.25. We know this is 11, so it's not going to be negative, and it doesn't look like it's, it's definitely not going to be 0. It's not ever going to go below 1, so it has to be choice E. Um, I call this Nike math. Actually, I don't call it that. And the teacher I used to work with called it Nike math. And Nike math means just do it. You, know, you just start plugging the numbers and, and see what happens. So this is a Nike math question in my book. The set of all positive integers that are divisible by 15 and 35 is infinite. because That means we can get as big a numbers as we want. What is the least positive integer in this set? So what's the smallest number that is divisible by 15 and 35? The reason this is a question 24 is it's just kind of stated kind of oddly. So is 5 divisible by 15? No. Is 50 divisible by 15? No. Is 105 divisible by 15? Yes. So is 105 divisible by 35? Yes. 105 is the answer. H. In the triangle shown below, measure A is 58 degrees, so this is 58 degrees. AB is congruent to AC, so we have an isosceles triangle. We want to know what is the measure of angle C. So we have 180 degrees in a triangle, minus 58 degrees will tell us how many degrees we have left in angle B and C. And we divide that by 2 because they're equal, because the sides are equal, the angles are equal, it's an isosceles triangle. So divide that, and we have um, 61. So your answer is D. So angle C is 61, and angle B is 61. About 1.48 times 10 to the 8 square kilometers of Earth's surface is land. The rest... 
3.63 times 10 to the 8th is water. If a returning capsule lands at random on the Earth's surface, which the following is a probability the capsule will land in water. Okay, so probability is what you want, and what we want is water over what you have, which is everything. So let's figure out what we have first. So we have 1.48 times 10 to the 8th plus 3.63 times 10 to the 8th. You could just put those in your calculator or you could convert them to non-scientific notation. And what we want is water. So we have 3.63 times 10 to the eighth. So you can put them in your calculator just like that and hit divide and get it, or you can convert them. And I just went ahead and converted them. And so you divide top number by the bottom number and you get 71%. Faster way to do this one, for those of you who just know science, if you know about 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in water, you can just get it in G and know that and move on. Um, so this is a, a, a question where knowledge of science could actually help you. So, G. On the first seven statistics test of the semester, Jamal scored these scores. Okay, I'm just going to rewrite these. The mean, median, and mode of his scores were 79, 80, and 80, respectively. On the eighth statistics test, Jamal scored a 90. Okay, so he's going to score 90 on one more test. We'll write that over here. How do the mean, median, and mode compare to those first seven scores? Okay, well, the mode doesn't change. So the mode, we know that, still the most common number, is 80. So that's going to be equal. So it has to be either choice C or E. That's easy to see. And now we see the mean is greater no matter which one. So is the median greater or equal? So in an odd set of numbers, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, even set of numbers, sorry, even set of numbers, it's going to be the average of the two middle numbers, which are both 80. So 80 is still the median. So it's going to be equal so your answer is E. What was the total number of white cubes used to build the prism? So I just counted the white cubes in each row. 21, 21, 21. And then, so that means this, this one, this one, and this one all have 21 white cubes. And the ones you can't see, the black cubes are going to be white. So you count those as well. Those are also 21. So 21 and 21 for this row and this row. So add those together, or 21 times 5 is 105. So your answer is H. There may be some formula to do this one, but I think this one's a lot easier just to count and move on. One side of a square has a length of 12 meters. So square means all sides are equal. So 12, that means the other side is also 12. A certain rectangle whose area is equal has a width of eight. So a width of eight, so eight, and we don't know the length, what is the length. But we know their areas are equal, so 12 times 12 is 144. That means this one has the same area. So eight X equals 144, divide both sides by eight, X equals 18, so your answer is C. The average of a list of four numbers is 92. So one, two, three, four numbers divided by four is 92. A new list of four numbers, so a new list of four numbers, one, two, three, four, has the same first three numbers as the original list. Okay, so they're going to have, so let's, these three numbers will be the same in both. But the fourth number in the original list is 40. So we know this number is 40. 
And the fourth number in the new list is 48. So this is 48. Let's remember these three numbers are the same. What is the average of the list of new numbers? So we know this is also going to be divided by 4. I want to know what is that going, what is the average going to be? So we don't know what these numbers are. So 3x is. So 3x plus 40 divided by 4 equals 92. Multiply both sides by 4 and subtract by 40. Or subtract 40 and we get 3x equals 328. All right, so all of these three x's together equal 328. We could solve for x if we wanted to, but we really don't, we really don't need to because we know that these three x's together equal 328. So 328 plus 48 divided by 4 equals what? And that's going to equal 94. So your answer is H. If you had went ahead and, just, and solved for X, you could have just taken X and put it in for each of the numbers right here, but you didn't need to solve for X because you just need all three X's together.